Hello and welcome everybody. Thank you so much for joining me today for Kineo's Totara Office Hours. Uh, we, we're doing things a little bit differently and I'm very excited about it. Um, we are starting to launch our office hours through uh, GoToWebinar. So we now have the ability for you guys to sign up and register for the sessions. And uh, I hope that you're finding that helpful. Um, a little bit about myself really quickly. My name is Taylor Craig and I am the, the A Platforms Consultant now. We actually have just brought on a new Platforms Consultant. Um, I'm the A Platforms Consultant here at Kineo and what this entails is I train uh, anybody who wants to listen to me, I guess, really, but um, I work with just about anybody, all of our clients, uh, potential clients as well, uh, to get you guys onboarded and make sure you're comfortable with the system. A little bit about office hours. First things first, we do a quick little overview um, of what it is and why we use office hours. Uh, we also do a quick little 15 minute feature presentation. We also post that recording on YouTube. However, the clients only is the Q&A time afterwards and we love you guys to come and bring your questions to us. Uh, we're happy to answer them. If we don't know the answer, we know somebody who does for sure. So let's talk a little bit about how you can replicate courses in your system. Um, you may not be aware, but you do have the ability to do this. You've had the ability to do this since 2.6, um, but you just may not have known about it. So you don't necessarily have to create these courses from scratch every single time. Uh, if you've ever created a course, which I'm sure most of you probably have, uh, you, you click and click and click and you've got all these different settings that you have to click through. Um, but if you have that perfect template or the template that you use every single time and you'd like to replicate it a hundred times and then just give it to the person who needs it, uh, you can absolutely do that and you do have the ability to do it. So let's go ahead and move this off the screen. You can do this based off of a CSV file. Um, if you've ever uploaded users, you've probably used a CSV file. Uh, and and this is what your CSV file is going to look like. Let me get that zoomed in a little bit so it's easier to see. So something to keep in mind, you really only need three main uh, headers here. And that's going to be the short name of the course, the full name of the course, and then the category ID number that it belongs in. Now, when you have this category ID number, and guys, I'll also pass along some additional documentation as well for you guys so that you have that. But basically what that category ID number is, is it is a ID number that you place into the category. So I just realized that my explanation was obvious. So let's take a look real quick. I want to show you where it's at because you do actually have to add it in. It's not something that you typically might do. So underneath site administration, courses, manage courses and categories, uh, here you're going to see all of the different categories that you have in your system. Uh, and then you see here that I have some additional wording under Dev 2, under Dev 1, under Dev 3. Uh, I just added these in for today's demonstration. But the way you add that in is you come in, once you've added in your category, you can edit that category. And then category ID number right here. Okay, so that's where you put that in. Typically, you don't fill that in, um, but it is looking for that so that it knows where to put those courses. Okay, uh, there are a couple of other headers that you can use for placing them into the appropriate category. I've had the best luck with this. Uh, this does typically work. And I wanted to point out, guys, it is not going to be this ID number up here. And the reason I wanted to point this out to you is because we're also going to pull a report on all the courses that we have on our system so that I can show you kind of how you can build this out using that as well. So it's not this ID number it's looking for. It is this ID number it's looking for. Okay. So let's just kind of take a quick peek here. I've also added in some additional headers. I've added in summary, so that is going to populate the summary for the course. I've added in news items because I don't typically like to show news items. I just want to turn them off from the get-go and I can do that here. Uh, I also typically don't want to show my grades to my, my users, um, at least in a corporate environment typically you don't. Um, so I want to turn that off. But if you had a one in there, it would be turned on. Okay, so that's kind of how that's going to work. And then also I really like this field, template course. 
So what the template course area is for is it's going to allow you to replicate an already existing course on your site. So this is the short name to another course on my site already, and that course is named Totora How To's. So let me show you that real fast. So I believe it's in here. I want to show you where I'm grabbing that. So here is the course that I'm going to replicate, this How To Videos. It's in a completely different category. But I want to show you real quick. So when you click on that course, you do get this nice little description of everything that's in the course. So the full name, the short name, and here's that short name, Totara How To's. Um, if you've created a course, you're aware that that short name is one of the things that you do have to actually type in as you're building that course out. So that's where that's coming from, guys. But what it's going to do is it's going to actually totally copy that course and create a brand new course with all that same same exact content, uh, which is really nice. And then I have another one. I think that one's the quiz, different quiz types or whatever. Uh, and the name of that template course is QT or the short name is. Okay, so you have the ability to do that. Now I'm going to show you a couple of different ways uh, that you have the ability to uh, replicate these courses. You can do it off of a template course just inside this file, uh, or you can do it another way, and we'll talk about that as well. So I'm going to go up here. I'm going to File, Save As, Computer, I'm Office Hours, I, this is where I'm keeping it. Um, for those of you who maybe have never worked with a CSV file, you do actually have to change the uh, file type to CSV, which is a common delimited file. So you're going to drop down that file type, and you're going to come in here and grab CSV, and then save that. I'm going to go ahead and replace it. Okay, and it will pop up if you're building this in Excel. You can do this in a uh, text uh, file as well. Uh, either one will allow you to save it as a CSV. I personally prefer Excel. It just gives me the ability to filter and all that good stuff. You can also do this in Google Sheets uh, if, if you're a Google shop. Now, you're, it's going to prop up if you're using Excel. Are you sure you want to do this? You're going to lose some of your features. We're really just doing the text side of things, so we don't have any features that are going to be lost. All right, so how we do this, we're going to go in here underneath Site Administration Courses, and we are going to go to Upload Courses right here. Click on that. Okay, so this is going to give you an area where you're going to drop it. You're telling it what the file is. So I'm going to grab the file off of my computer, assuming I can find my folder. There it is. It's on another screen. Okay, so here I have course file. That's the one that I was just working in. So I'm going to grab that, drag, and drop it in. Once it kind of turns where it's a link, um, and yours may look a little bit different because of the theme, but once it turns where it looks like a link, you see that it has loaded. You don't have to do anything with any of these other uh, situations. You may want to change this preview rows if you're loading in a really whole bunch of courses, more than 10. Uh, you may want to see the preview for those. The preview is just kind of nice because it shows you if you had any errors or if something didn't work. Okay. Now, you do have some options as far as your import options. You can create all new courses and skip existing ones. So if you have a list of all of your courses, and I'll show you how to get a list of all of your courses out of your system just using reporting. It's really easy to do. Um, so if you have that, you can skip over the existing ones if you want to. Create all and increment short name if needed. So what that's going to do is it's going to create all the courses, basically, and kind of name them for you and put a one, two, three, four out there. Uh, create new courses and update existing ones. So if you have updates that you're making to existing courses, you can actually do that here. Uh, and you can also choose to only update existing courses. Guys, this is really similar to just your regular user upload, which is not HR import. So there's two places where you can upload users. We may have to talk about that in another session. Okay, so I'm just going to say create new courses only, skip existing ones, because I don't really have any. And then what that's going to do is it's going to kind of block out all this stuff. I don't have the ability to use it. But if I wanted to, I could say create new courses, and then it's going to tell me, uh, give me options, okay, what do I do with the existing courses, right? So that's what this is applying to here. Okay, so that's what's happening there. But I'm just going to say create new courses and go ahead and hit the preview button. So it's going to work just a little bit here. It's a good sign when it spins for a minute because that means it's actually running your file and it's actually doing what it's supposed to be doing. Um, if it 
immediately brings you here, chances are it's going to be good that you're probably going to have some red X's. Something didn't work in your file. But in my case, it did work in my file, so it is showing me little check marks. And I see that new, uh, course, new course 1 through 4 were created. Now, I do have some additional import options that I see here. So we still, again, we, we're just on the preview screen here. Now, in this particular case, we had in our file, we had the template. So if we look back at our file, this was the template course that I wanted it to replicate. So I'm allowing myself basically to replicate two courses, two different courses, a couple of different times. Um, <clears throat> if you were wanting to replicate just one course, a whole bunch of times, you can drag and drop the backup of that course in here and it will replicate just that one course however many times you had it in the file. Okay, so you have the ability to do that. You also have the ability to choose here a few other additional things about that course. So basically the settings that you would set, um, but this is going to apply to every single course. However, guys, one thing that you might be aware of, in my file, I already answered some of these questions, like which category it belongs in, and, and, and visibility, and course start date, some of that stuff. I already answered some of those things in my file. So what's going to happen is if I don't make any changes to this, my file is going to overwrite it. Okay, but if I do make a change to this, then it's going to place them wherever I, whatever I did here. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click on Upload Courses. So again, it's processing, so that's a good thing. Cool. So this is what we want to see. We want to see course created, and then also we want to see course created, course restored. The reason I like that course restored is because if we jump back to our file, remember, we're replicating this Totara How-To's course. So that's what we're doing with this. Also, I like the fact that I see courses total, four courses created, four courses updated, zero, deleted, zero, and errors, zero. I really like seeing that zero there. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to continue. And now if I go into, I'm going to open this in a new tab real quick. And jump over here. We now see that we do have courses that are in this. I don't know if you noticed earlier, but that was zero. But if I click on under development one, that category, I see new course one, I see new course two. Those weren't in here earlier. And if I go into new course two, it should be a copy of that other course, that how-to's, and it is, okay? So it is a complete and total copy of that course, okay? So that's one way to do that. Uh, you might have to make some tweaks and adjustments maybe to your uh, number of topics that are in there. Uh, you may also have to remove some blocks and things like that, but most of the, con the content's there, which is great, okay? So let's take a look at how you might pull a report and get a list of every single course on your site. Uh, you may not be aware of how to do that, and that kind of helps you out, at least in building this file out initially. So what we're going to do is I'm going to jump down here. We're going to go to Site Administration, and we are going to go to Reports, Report Builder, Manage Reports. And there's actually a report source in here called Courses. Um, and you may, may or may not be using it. I like it, though, because I can then tweak it to pull back just the information I need. So I've already built one, but it is the report source courses, so definitely take a look at that. And what this is going to do is it pulls back every single one of my courses. It pulls back every single one of my courses' short names, and it's also telling me exactly which category it's currently in, which is really nice as well. So I really like that it does that, and you'll see here that my underdevelopment ones are here. Now, earlier I made a big deal about the category ID number. Um, the reason I made a big deal about it is because this report is a little bit misleading, because it will pull a course category ID number, but that is the one that is up there in that URL. So that's why I made a big deal about that, because I don't want you to get confused as far as which, which one it's looking for. It's looking for the one that you actually manually key in. Okay, so just keep that in mind. That column may not be very helpful for you. But what I like about this is I do have the ability to export this in Excel. So I can export and then open that up. And basically what this has done for me is it's created a, 
uh, it's already started out that file. So you have to change some headers, maybe move a few things around, but you have everything that you need to get started right here in front of you. So really, really a nice feature there um, and maybe something that you weren't aware of. So guys, that is how you can replicate lots and lots of courses. Um, we can also talk about um, dragging and dropping in a, uh, it escapes me, a backup of another course. Let me talk about that real fast. It won't take us too long. So what I can do here is I've got a different course file here. And it's called New Course 7. New Course 7, all it has is just the basics that I absolutely have to have. So, which is short name, full name, and then the category that I want to place it into. So this is Course File 2, and I've already saved it and all that good stuff. So I'm going to drag that over here, if I can get it. There we go. Okay, so that's loading in. And I'm going to go ahead and preview. Now what this is doing, guys, is I'm not creating a template using the CSV file. I'm going to use a different uh, option to do that. I'm going to restore from a backup file. So if I come in here, I've made a backup of a course in my system. And here it is. I've got it. I've downloaded that backup. So I'm going to grab that backup file. I'm going to drop that in now. Okay. And then I'm going to go ahead and upload the course. And what it's going to do, basically, is it's going to restore that course for me. So it's saying course created, course restored. And if I go to find that one, and I believe I placed it in here, and it should be called New Course 7. There it is. If we take a look, it should have all the content in it that that backup had as well. And that was a backup of the same course that we saw earlier. So really, really a nice feature. I'm not sure if you were aware that you had it, but you do. Uh, and I will pass along some documentation as well. All right, guys, that's what I have for you. Let me go ahead and uh, open the floor up to you for your questions.